Thank you very much. And like we said, when we opened the panel today, Pioneer the Possible is supported by Vinova, the Office of Science Innovation, Embassy of Sweden in India, and Business Sweden. SIBC is partnering with these the Team Sweden stakeholders to make a discussion and share discussions on what we can do to move ambition forward. Now, the video you just saw, of course, laid out some of the ambitions that come, of course, on the eve of, or not the eve, the, the following discussions we've had at COP26. India has made some bold statements. Sweden, of course, is leading the discussion on transition. But what's important in this is testing, is collaboration, is experimentation. And our second panel today on the role of 5G in test beds to pioneer the transformation digitization is what one way of discussing these outcomes. We have a panel of experts with us. On the sofa with me, we have Dr. Uma Kamsoni, CEO and co-founder of Art Park. Online with us, we have Eric Borlov, Program Manager at Vinova, Susanna Matson, Deputy Director, Swedish Ministry of Infrastructure, Division for D Digital Employment, Lena Kokreja, who's the Senior Advisor at the Office of Science Innovation, Embassy of Sweden, sitting together with Per Anna Ekensi, who is head of the Office of Science and Innovation at the Embassy of Sweden. We also have Subhash Mondal, who is the head of R&D, HCFL Limited, Subhata Mitra, head of government relations, Ericsson, and Professor Bazar Saran, who's at IIT Delhi, leading computer science. A lot of people on today's discussion. It's a very, very busy panel, but also please note Triple Helix panel. We have industry, we have government, and we have academia to discuss today's um, very interesting topic on 5G and test beds. I'm actually going to start with Vinova. Vinova, Eric, you have the responsibility of coordinating and creating the test bed infrastructure. Before actually I ask you the question, we need to set the stage. I just realized that Per Arne and Lena need to start the stage, set the stage for us. So I'm going to actually turn to Dr. Per Arne Wikström to actually give us the welcoming address for today's panel before I turn to Eric and then ask our panelists to contribute to the discussion. Okay, um, hello everyone. Um, and good morning, um, everyone in, in Gothenburg in Sweden and uh, good afternoon to you uh, in India. Uh, I'm delighted to be here. Um, and um, of course, uh, it's uh, a pleasure to be able to welcome you to the Finding the Possible session of this uh, role of test beds in supporting digital transformation. Um, I'm really looking forward to this. Uh, so, uh, based here uh, in India now, I would say that collaboration is definitely um, the key uh, when it comes to um, getting things forward and um, Playing with um, the concept of pioneer the possible, I think that collaboration is something that we need to do to uh, pioneer the possible. And I'm pleased uh, to uh, to tell you, uh, listen here and watch this, that you will meet some of these uh, uh, collaborating pioneers today from different uh, contexts uh, around Sweden and India. Uh, so uh, the Sweden-India Innovation Partnership, as you know has gone from strength to strength uh, uh, in the last couple of years. I'm happy to uh, have joined this uh, ship of, uh, of a progress together with the Swedish and Indian uh, friends and colleagues here. And we've had uh, several high-level uh, meetings during these years, and they, uh, of course, has boosted uh, the interest in bilateral collaboration between our countries. And um, We've seen multiple uh, joint calls being la launched between our countries, uh, and we have, I know it's on the Swedish side, we've, we've uh, had a co-funding of about 150 million uh, Sweden, uh, Swedish crowns, uh, matched by the Indian side. And uh, so we, we, we have done a lot already, and we will be doing a lot in the future, of course. Uh, today's discussion, I think, um, will provide an opportunity for dialogue on how we can improve uh, uh, the, uh, the relations uh, between our countries even further. And um, in my role as a councillor here in New Delhi, um, I have uh, focused on measures to improve collaboration between the research infrastructures between our countries. And, and uh, when I talk about the, the, the research infrastructures, to me, uh, clusters, incubators, test beds are natural parts of it and, and really, really important, crucial for 
uh, for uh, this collaboration. Today, the focus is on 5G testbeds, uh, and 5G uh, can definitely be a game changer, of course, for our industries and economies. Uh, India's 5G leap uh, is about powering tomorrow. Uh, from smart cities and industrial automation to connected devices, big data, and cloud computing, 5G is seen as a key catalyst that can fuel future growth. And as per national digital communications policy, it's believed that India's digital economy has the potential to reach $1 trillion by the year 2025, driven by increased proliferation of smartphones, increased internet penetration, of course, growth and mobile broadband data, and social media. Uh, I'm really looking forward to uh, hearing from the panelists today uh, on how they are disrupting the market and creating value networks. So bring it on, pioneers. Thank you. Thank you, Perrin. And of course, the Joy Innovation Partnership that you mentioned has been one of the overriding factors for the operational engagement between India and Sweden in the last few years. We've been working with you and your team to get ground level results and the calls that you mentioned have been critical enablers to move this discussion forward. I'd like to turn to Lena to set the stage for our discussion and as you say, enable the pioneers we have on our panel today. Lena, over to you. Thanks, Arundi. In the last few years, the use of the term testbed has increased in Sweden and in India, and I think several initiatives to push both quantity and quality of different testbeds have been initiated in both countries. Uh, speaking for Sweden, recently the Swedish government launched the initiative Testbed Sweden, which aims to make it more attractive to invest in Swedish research and innovation environment. Very happy that we have Vinova here. Vinova is the Swedish innovation agency. Uh, regard a testbed as a physical or virtual environment in which companies, academia, and other organizations can collaborate in the development, testing, and introduction of new products, services, or solutions. Test and demonstration environments are becoming increasingly important for the public and private sectors as goods and services are developed at a more rapid pace and they become increasingly complex. 5G, of course, will have a major impact on the industry and enable value creating innovation in several sectors, as Parani just highlighted. Both public and private businesses have a lot to gain from the test bed environment and the opportunities for innovation that the 5G test beds create. Both India and Sweden have invested in the test beds for 5G testing. Cross border collaboration is crucial in fast forwarding the 5G global pace. During today's moderated dialogue, we will hear about the 5G testbeds from some of the pioneers from both India and Sweden. The session will also offer a platform to discuss potential collaboration between Sweden and India in the area of testbeds. We have a fantastic lineup of, lineup of speakers today. I'm especially thrilled about the different perspectives that we will gather from today's discussion. As Arti said, we have a triple helix panel, so we'll hear different viewpoints today. We have representatives from government, industry, academia, but also managers of testbeds as well as the end users of this testbed. And with that, I would end here and request Arati to take it forward uh, with our esteemed panelists. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lena. And like you mentioned, there's a lot of innovation in the testbed arena, but India still has very few testbeds to speak of. We need to move forward. We need to get Sweden and India working together because Sweden has the experience for this, for this sharing. And that brings me to you, Eric. You are working with Vanova, the Swedish Innovation Agency. You have the responsibility for coordinating and holding together the testbed interactions in Sweden. How can we take this from your experiences here to create an international collaboration? And in this case, what can we do with countries like India? Thank you. Thank you for inviting Vinova to come speak here at this event. So I think a couple of things. Uh, I think what used to exist will still exist uh, tomorrow going forward. So we will still see the old existing test beds be strong and be used. And this classical idea of test beds will, will still be around for a long time. 
And I'm thinking now of testing the technology and standards. That's a core function for any kind of test bed. Uh, it is also for us as an innovation agency, a way of uh, supporting cooperation between stakeholders and needs owners. This is sometimes forgotten aspect of the test bed when we sort of focus uh, only on the technology itself. Uh, and the test beds will still be a way of easing and sharing resources. So you can, by testing somewhere else, you create uh, efficiency and space for your own uh, test facilities. Uh, so what is changing and what is maybe considered a little bit new. Uh, so cooperation can be more than just the test. Uh, it could be these kinds of roundtables that we have today and other kinds of dialogues around issues concerning the testing and the development itself. Uh, what is new a little bit is that we can benefit even more from external users. We have our own users, we have our own developers. This is existing in our own organization usually. And uh, what we don't have are these foreign users that we don't today normally have access to. This is a way we could use this cooperation even more. And, and we know that the world is global, has been for many years, but it, it's still expanding. And we see even a more global context in everything we do today. Uh, what is slightly new also is that Test facilities used to be very physical. It, it, it is a place where you go. This is changing a little bit. It doesn't have to be a physical place. It could be a virtual digital testing site. We, we can do things different uh, going forward. So what we see now on the horizon are uh, this aspect of course of digital. And when we talk about test beds then we, we sort of look even more at interoperability. Uh, it, it's not only a question of standards, but it's also a, a way of operating together. And it is, for this discussion around test beds, it is, I think, important to think about what is the required new digital infrastructure going forward. Uh, it is not the same as it used to be uh, for example, we need more uh, things happening around payments, identity, security. Uh, we, we have some of those answers, but we don't have them all. And one really difficult thing, uh, which is also happening, but not, not always on a good level, is data sharing. How are we able to share data? It's sometimes a, a question of tech technology, of course, but it can also be uh, about the integrity and security. And how do we regulate and do this in an efficient manner? So these are some aspects that are sort of uh, still ongoing and some aspects are changing. And as an innovation agency, this is one of our tasks going forward. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks so much, Eric. And of course, the point you make about data sharing and you have a country like Sweden with the data points that we have, and a country like India with the data points they have, and the sharing on analysis and data formulation that we can actually make if we can collaborate and find ways through regulation to actually achieve common agendas and objectives on the ground. And actually, that's a question I'm going to come to Professor Saran at IIT. Now, you've been working, of course, with 5G test beds for a while now. You've been running some of the early 5G trials in India. What do you see happening in India as, as the test bed discussion expands in this arena? And how do we actually answer the question of access as you develop the test bed technologies and the discussions? How does academia, industry, and users like myself benefit from this? Professor Saran, can you hear us? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, good. So uh, the thing is that uh, these um, test beds, uh, like in India, 5G, we are in 
we started a little later than others. So licensing is still under discussion in India, so there's no licenses. Only a couple of experimental licenses have been given for trials. And I, uh, but the Department of Communication, which is uh, responsible for this area of 5G, has, has funded a number of IITs, IIT Delhi, uh, IIT. If you, if I can share a slide, it may be easier. But anyway, I can just tell you. You can share a slide from your computer if you. Okay, okay, I'll just do that. Then. It says host disabled participants screen sharing. So somebody has to allow it. First. Yeah, well, I'll, they're, I think, fixing that in the back. But if you keep telling us your thoughts. Okay. Yeah. So in the meantime, uh, so uh, the department, this is one of the f first times they have done it. In 4G, they never did it. But they funded a number of academic institutes. Professor, um, if you want to share, it's able now. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, maybe we could, maybe we continue talking, Professor. Sarah. It might be. Yeah, so I'm just to, trying to get the slide up. Okay. Okay. Great, uh, we see so that. here it is. Uh, uh, so, the, 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 so this gives you a picture of the, the participating institutes. So they are uh, the, um, sort of they all over the country. I don't uh, a bunch of IITs, or IIT, six or seven of them, and the department funded the Department of Telecommunication Ministry of IT funded it. I don't want to. These are the names of the institutes and the individual activities they perform. You don't have to go into the individual activities, but you can see there are the five IITs and ISC Bangalore, and there is a, a research center called Samir, which is specializes in RF and antenna. And they have divided, they divided up. This was funded three years ago, so it's almost in the completion stage now. Uh, and uh, these are the different pieces that got built. Uh, there is the core network part that was built by IIT Bombay and with some contribution from IIT Madras. Uh, there's the IoT devices and sensors part which is done partly by IIT Hyderabad, partly by IIT Delhi. There's work on uh, uh, vehicle to vehicle, the IIT and IIT Delhi were involved. There is the um, millimeter wave work at 26 gigahertz, uh, which was done uh, with. Uh, Samir, Chennai, and IIT Madras. And uh, then the cell phone, the, the um, other parts like that. You can see it, there is also the 3.5 gigahertz part. So we did both the uh, millimeter wave and the sub 6 gigahertz uh, 5G as part of this implementation. And uh, this uh, goes Professor, into, if I can ask the, you from these examples that you're showing us, what do you take hmm. away as being the core advantage of having these? These different test beds uh, and rolling them out. All right. So, so the core advantage is that first of all, uh, you gain a much deeper insight into the technology than you would ever gain. And even the uh, second part is you can then expose both your user, potential users, and operators to what the technology entails, both in terms of how they will roll it out, what are the challenges of it, as well as how they will use it. Right. In the end, it, the question is, you can say it's 5G is, is a lot better than 4G, but from a user perspective, what does it mean? What is an application that they can run on it that they could not run earlier or run better on it and earlier it was not running yet? So those are the scenarios, whether it is in the IoT space, different kind of uh, monitoring and other activities they can want to do, or it is uh, in the remote vehicle operation or autonomous vehicle space. So these different use cases is one important way you can expose, and that can be used to learn how the technology can be better suited to those applications. So it's a sort of a um, iterative, agile process through which you are able to refine the technology and develop better understanding of how the technology should be used for a particular use case. And that can help uh, with the uh, the society rolling out different scenarios, whether it is smart city scenarios when we talk about 5G, or the operators figuring out how to monetize uh, the users 
so that they get value out of 5G and they, so they are willing to pay more. So these are the benefits from all of this. Uh, I just uh, walk through the pictures in the slide. We'll, I won't talk about it. You can see the standard stuff. So. I think what, you're, what we're going to talk about now, of course, is the evidence-based industrial applications. And having mm -hmm. test beds like the ones IIT are participating in allows for industry to really learn from a use case perspective and apply it to a commercial mm -hmm. rollout. And of course, we have with us today, in addition to the triple helix model and government and yourself, we have Ericsson on the panel with us today. We have Subhata Mitra, great, we see you now, um, head of government relations for Ericsson. All of us, Professor Sarant, great, so I'm going to stop sharing. All of us reading about India's 5G test beds are seeing the trials that are being run now in India in limited scenarios. It's very exciting to see. I think the rural village scenario was the first test bed to be rolled out. And we, of course, will hear more in the coming future. As in your, in your perspective of Ericsson, as a key player in the industry in India, what do you see happening on the test bed and 5G ecosystem as we move forward? Uh, thank you. Uh, thanks for the opportunity to be here. Uh, it's indeed a pleasure and the privilege to share the pa panel with uh, esteemed people, especially Professor Hugo Sharon. Good to see you, sir. Uh, now, uh, if I can just uh, take the audience a bit back into time. If you see the Indian government's approach towards 5G has been a uh, well, well thought through process. So if I can take you back to say the national digital communication policy, which was released in 2018, and the 5G high-level forum policy document sometime in 2019, they very clearly laid out that test beds will be uh, one of the way for to promote 5G, especially among Indian startups, uh, IoT players, and others, so that they could harness the power of 5G and do. And I think it is to the credit of the Indian government and IITs that we have seen a massive public test bed come up at so. Uh, uh, professor explained spread all over the country and uh, I strongly believe this will be, this will accelerate the growth of IOT and other startups in India to harness the test bed to roll it out. I think that's a huge transformation and I think for once we must complement the government of India and the IITs uh, for rolling it out and I'm sure uh, you know when when we have the discussions in five years or ten years down the line the impact of that will then surely be you know, visible very clearly then. Now, coming on to the aspect of 5G and what we are doing, you are aware of the ongoing trials, uh, which is field trials, which is happening in India with the operators. We have the uh, privilege of doing with some of the involved in some of the trials uh, with the, the leading operators in India. Uh, while there have been a lot of talks, one of the recent trial results, which I want to emphasize is on, is on the, uh, you know, the rural trial. Because one of the argument that was always made out is that, you know, is 5G relevant for rural part of India? Is it relevant for rural? This one? And that's when we felt that it was important to demonstrate the power of 5G. And what we did was that along with our operator customer, Airtel and Ericsson, we got together and we did a trial uh, in one of the rural uh, parts of uh, Delhi NCR region, the National Capital Region. We went a uh, bit away from the capital and we did a trial. The trial was carried out on 3.5 megahertz mid-band. Uh, it, it is the test spectrum which the DOT uh, Department of Telecom has given to the industry for the operators for the trial. And what we had seen is that uh, we used the existing FDD spectrum was also used. We almost demonstrated more than 200 Mbps throughput was achieved on the 3GPP compliant 5G FWA device, the fixed wireless access device, at a distance of more than 10 kilometers from the test site. And this is in a rural environment. And similarly, as part of the trial, commercially available 3GPP based 5G smartphone connected to that trial network and delivered again almost 100 Mbps of speed, again at a distance of around 10 kilometer plus. So while we are doing a lot of trials in the urban area, that I think this demonstration that 5G is aptly set for India uh, to address the rural India, I think gives will now give confidence to the policymakers, will give confidence to the industry and this entire ecosystem that you know India plans to come out from the rural part of India, what we call as Bharat, 
I think is there. And second, it's also nicely dovetails into this overall government of India strategy of doubling the income levels of rural India and uh, you know, increasing more activity, economic activity there, uh, moving people away from, say, poor farming into other agriculture-related activities. I think the power of 5G in rural India demonstrates that, yes, now you have a, a technology, you have a communication platform. Uh, now only, you know, uh, it, uh, the dreams will translate into reality by a lot of startups. And if you see the startup space, again, in India, VOP uh, has been doing hackathon, 5G hackathon was there. There was a massive participation from uh, Indian uh, uh, talent, engineering talent from colleges and startups. And there were very interesting startups which have come and demonstrated how they plan to harness the power of 5G uh, to address a lot of uh, you know, use case requirements, not just in the urban sector, but in rural. And now coming back to on the test bed uh, piece of it, how we see the way we look at it, uh, this is that now 5G is almost uh, uh, enough proven technology around the world. As Ericsson, we ourselves have rolled out almost 97 networks in almost 46 of countries. Uh, globally now close to the 170 commercial 5G networks. So our request is that it's time for India now to roll out the 5G uh, network. We are hearing that uh, the, the, there was a positive statement from the minister about uh, proposed uh, 5G auction next year. And uh, once you have this 5G rollout, you will have this test bed facility, not, not just the one which say IIT uh, has set up, uh, you would also potentially have test beds which could be set up by the operators. You could have test beds set up by other entities using the services from the operator. And this test bed could actually become as a some kind of a service offering uh, which they could offer to all these startups because you are talking about thousands and thousands of startups on companies who are going to access that. And they, that's where it's going to do. So you will have the IIT so start as a fulcrum and you'll see the rest revolve around it. Thank you. Thank you, Sabatha. And I think what you're touching upon is something that will come up again and again during the course of today is how AI, digitization, 5G can democratize access, really allowing for startups to join the discussion, allowing for new actors to come on board to actually take the discussion forward in ways we have not predicted before. But all our speakers to this point have actually talked about national test beds, have talked about the importance of understanding foreign users, but we don't have any cases with us right now. So I actually want to push our comfort zone a little bit. And to do that, I will turn to the government. I will turn to Susanna, working for the Division of Digital Deployment, Ministry of Infrastructure in Sweden. Now, working with test beds, of course, there are examples that we've heard in Sweden. There are examples, many examples in India, and these will continue to develop. But how do we actually collaborate? We heard earlier today that digitization AI brings us to a borderless universe. There is no such thing as country-specific discussions in this universe. Data will drive what we do and how we understand the world around us. What can we do with this new connectedness when it comes to 5G and test beds to collaborate, not just within our countries, but across countries? Okay, so thank you very much. Um, uh, and thank you for inviting me <clears throat> to this panel, actually, I guess the, the invitation goes to the Ministry of Infrastructure for Digital Development Deployment. And the reason that I'm here as the representative of the ministry is that I'm engaged in the work of council of ministers, or the Nordic Council of Ministers, notably with the part that is engaged in digitalization and the encouraging, encouraging and development side of 5G. And the there's a rotating presidency of this Nordic Council of Ministers, and in 2018, uh, Sweden had the, has, had the presidency, and then the Nordic Prime Minister signed a declaration on 5G, stating that the Nordic region should be the most integrated region in the world, and that it should become a common Nordic space. And among the policy goals that the Nordic ministers agreed upon uh, in order to, to realize this goal, was actually to encourage the development of new testing facilities. And the rationale for including the test beds in the declaration is that they are widely recognized as instrumental in the development of 5G for developing new products, services, and business models. And it was pointed out that the implementation of the declaration is dependent on the cooperation 
between governments, national digital authorities, and stakeholders from the ICT and telecom industries. So in order to elaborate on the question that I have been asked to talk about uh, during this panel, I will draw experiences from the work of the Nordic Council of Ministers on the um, 5G test beds. So in order to implement the declaration, it was decided to carry out the baseline study in order to get a picture of what the situation really looks like in the re region regarding test beds. And a consultant was commissioned to do a baseline, to do this baseline study. And one finding that uh, the, co the consultant saw is that there's a vast range and variety of test beds and other test activities going on in the Nordic and Baltic regions. And they report almost 50 test beds for 5G. And this, um, this report was um, performed during uh, 2019. So I guess this, uh, the number of test beds may have increased since then. But they could see that there are test beds of varying kind, that they are public, they are that are offering services to anyone interested, as well as test beds that are closed, serving the need of an individual company or other stakeholders. And the mapping also showed, showed that the Nordic and Baltic countries have the potential to come, become a leader in the application of 5G, that is in manufacturing industry, transport, or agriculture. But the report also showed that the level of Nordic Baltic 5G collaboration is quite low as far as test beds go. So among the things that the consultant highlighted was that there are different driving forces towards test beds in the different countries in the region. For example, in Finland, the main driving forces are public organizations in collaboration with operators, academia and cities. In Sweden, they saw that the industries are strong driving forces in creating use in test beds, but also municipalities and universities feature 5G test beds in Sweden. In Norway, they could see that the operator Telenor uh, is a major driving force for 5G test beds. And in Denmark, they saw that the driving forces are the Danish energy agency together with the operators TDC. In Iceland, it's the operation and inspection agency that are found to be drivers to 5G activities and test beds. And lastly, in the Baltic countries, the consultants found that the, the governments are behind the driving forces uh, on these activities. They could also see that most 5G activities are local or national, that really few are transnational, and that there are very few test beds in this region that few feature cross-border collaboration. So the consultant also made a SWOT analysis for the Nordic Baltic region for 5G activities and development of 5G. And among the regional, regional strengths in the region are that many, many 5G test beds are active and that the prime minister declaration is a strong signal of the political interest in 5G development, that there are several strong verticals like manufacturing industries and transport. And that the region uh, has uh, telecom leaders such as Ericsson and Nokia and the history of the IT leadership in the region. But they could also see that there are certain threats towards the um, development of 5G. And that is the low coordination between governments and public authorities across the region. And also that uh, China, the US and South Korea are way ahead of us. Among the weaknesses, they saw that there are little coordination of 5G activities and there are difficulties to identify new business models. And among the opportunities, they could see that the region could take a lead within uh, especially, especially manufacturing and transport industries. And that there is a high number of local 5G initiatives from cities, municipalities, universities and industries. So the consultant concluded in his report that there's a need to focus on regional cooperation between 5G test beds and showcasing the region's strength on 5G innovation to remove existing regulatory barriers to 5G networks across borders in the region and to support regional and cross-border cooperation between testing environments. So Hello, that was the study. You. 
Mm-hmm. I think you okay. raised some very interesting points here in terms of we have different activities and different actors coming together. And even within the Nordics, we have a need for greater collaboration, communication, and sharing of experiences and mm-hmm. access. And yeah. you raise a very good point of having different triggers. I would say it's very similar in other countries that policy becomes the pipeline for business activity. It's the insurer, it's the safety mechanism. It's how you know you have a way forward. I know that's the case in India as well. And government plays a key role in reassuring users, public and private, they will be behind them as we keep taking next, the next steps. Now, our next speaker on the panel, of course, is working with industrial and academic partnerships and will also be cognizant of the fact that government plays a very key role in reassuring your steps as you move forward. Shabas, you're working with the head of R&D for HCFL, and I wanted to ask you, what has been your experience with this triple helix every day and the role that government plays and what that means for you as an industry player working with academia? Thank you, Arti. And it was great to hear the previous speakers bringing different aspects. So I have been in the Indian telecom for the last 30 years, have um, worked with uh, various uh, academia uh, as well. And specifically in 5G test bed, I have been involved with the uh, Indian Institute of Science for some time now. And of course, Professor Saron is here. I have interacted in different forums in this. So one of the uh, thing, of course, HFCL uh, has started 5G journey just about eight months back. I am in this organization for six months. I am creating my own private test bed. But I would like to share some of my experiences with the test bed in general and my thoughts about how I see this academia industry collaboration coming together and the value that test bed is creating. If I really look at it, like Professor Saran said, 5G test bed sponsoring by Department of Telecom was a major step. Subrat also endorsed this, which allowed the academic researchers to go beyond the pure theoretical research to get results, quote unquote, to make something concrete, which realizes the technology beyond the pure research. And I think we have seen a reflection of that in terms of India for the first time playing a significant role in the 5G standardization. India published its 5G I standard that became one of the 5G radio interface technology endorsed by ITU. This is probably the first major milestone that I see. And then the test bed had a big role to play in this. And as I mentioned, I'm a firm believer of the industry academia collaboration. If I had to go back and ask the government one thing, what probably could have been enhanced a little bit in this test bed initiative is can we bring an industry and make the fund access to the industry? Of course, the industry participation was enabled. That is why I was able to access the test bed. But can you have a, a milestone driven the fund access and then also bring in an end customer, one of the operators, and then say, you define a problem. If done, you commit to uh, deploy it. So that way, the researcher who enable a set of startup or the folks who really want to solve the problem defined by operator get a 360 degree coverage of it, which I believe would really, really have a much more engagement. And I would extend that little bit to say the cross-border use cases. Today, if you look, uh, Subrata talked about the 5G hackathon. I was one of the jury into that. Uh, there are 100 um, ideas that were rewarded, recognized, and then that is gone through the second level. I was a mentor and jury in the second level as well. Uh, so it has really given rise to a lot of uh, startup ideas and uh, has been an opportunity to nurture them. If we can bring Sweden and India together and say that cross-border problem, can we give a Sweden use case in Indian test, but can we put an Indian use case into Sweden test? Can we do the research or exchange program? If any of those kinds of things are done, I guess it will be a lot of good to this. I also have uh, uh, one suggestion that I have been uh, a chair into IEEE industry connection program. And if you look into the IEEE industry connection, it works in a boundaryless fashion across the globe. The researcher can come together to 
uh, create a test bed and then see if there is a potential that has not been solved in the existing standard and then come up with some ideas to map them. So if we can take an industry relevant problem and bring into this cross country test bed, if we are considering on, so for example, today, network disaggregation is a big issue. HFCL is working on over and compliant product creation. One of the challenge that I will face is the interoperability that I have to do and the investment, research investment that is required to procure the tool chain, it's a phenomenon. While I'm buying it, but I would uh, look forward to a test bed, which actually can give research as a service, tools as a service from the test bed. And if it is accessible for very expensive tools that I cannot afford, I probably can access to that. I think these are some of the things I guess uh, would really help, but I really appreciate this opportunity to uh, make me part of this initiative. Looking forward to the fair conversation as a follow up. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Bash. We'll come back to the panel with a lightning round to set the stage for the future 10 years. But you've actually given us a great segue to Umakan Sony. Umakan is the CEO and co founder of Art Park. And what Subash has just said is what I'm going to actually hand over to you, Umakan. We're looking for interoperability. We're looking for cross-border. We're looking for access to users and toolkits. Now, Art Park, with its focus, and of course, ISC is one of your partners as well in the state of Karnataka, can be this kind of one-stop shop for all the different ambitions put on the table today. Tell us about Art Park. While we wait for your mic to be fixed, um, Art Park is, has started three years ago, and of course, many of the companies that are part of the Sweden-India corridor are talking with Art Park to set up cross-collaborations. And Umakant is here from Bangalore to continue those discussions on site. Yeah, uh, so very quickly, uh, the way I see, uh, and just give you a quick background of Art Park, uh, and of course myself as well, I've spent almost close to 20 years uh, coming from industry, uh, last 12 years have been in AI space, first as an entrepreneur, and then as an investor, I set up the first AI-focused fund, venture fund in India called Pi Ventures, just focused on funding uh, AI companies. And uh, it was interesting and uh, that we looked at almost close to 430 companies, and we could find only two uh, companies which were working in the connected car space in India. And then we actually, in, you know, asked the entrepreneurs, like, why, why, why aren't uh, there more of them? And they said that if they actually want to do connected cars at global level, they have to go to South Korea to test it. And that was actually a big trigger for us because that gives you an insight as to the challenges the startups face. So when we set up Art Park uh, with the seed uh, grant from Government of India under NMICPS mission from Department of Science and Technology and Government of Karnataka, uh, close to $32 million in seed uh, fund uh, with an aim to bring global industry, academia, and governments together uh, in a place which could actually lead to uh, India-specific technologies, which could also be relevant to the world uh, to actually develop. Uh, we, we actually kept that perspective at the center of how we are approaching the test bed. So in fact, uh, we're very happy to announce that we're actually setting up a 10-acre uh, space, uh, which is actually we're going to have a 5G uh, test bed, uh, along working along with Indian Institute of Science. And uh, the interesting thing is that it's actually for both uh, ground mobility as well as aerial mobility, and we're focusing on ultra reliability, uh, low latency. Uh, you know, that's the core, uh, you know, perspective that we are looking at because that's actually going to be the future. And I just wanted to actually add to what Subhash and uh, Suzanne was talking about, that the future, if I see, by 2030, we're going to have uh, close to 1 billion people as digital nomads. Uh, that means they could be anywhere. And they would be working across borders. And, uh, and to actually you know, pioneer that possibility, uh, we are opening these test beds up for uh, collaboration, of course, with industry also with academia and governments, with the perspective to spur innovation, not just in mobility, but also in healthcare. Uh, we're talking about education, we're talking about agriculture. And I think it's, it's important that we take a wider perspective on these uh, test beds, uh, because it could be possible that, you know, you could actually have 
uh, you know, a nurse in India taking care of a patient in Japan or somewhere else, or maybe uh, a child uh, being nurtured by uh, the education talents of uh, a country like Sweden in India. So, so there are various possibilities of future that we need to grow somewhere. And I think that's where the role of test beds is actually extremely critical from three perspectives that I see. One, of course, to find out what are the new use cases that could emerge, and that's where the innovation part comes in. The second one is about standardization, and I think uh, some of the people uh, touched upon it that earlier, that we need to actually have uh, you know, things that will work across uh, multiple industry players, and that's where you know, we are experimenting with open RAM, uh, and, and, and I think we need to probably accelerate some of that efforts, and we'll be very happy to actually have industry, academia, and uh, other players also collaborate and join us. Uh, the third thing that I see is, and actually that's very important, is that while 5G is the beginning, we actually are looking at advanced communication. And COVID has actually proved that. I mean, this is a this is a great way to actually bring that into focus. We are digital physical in more than one ways. And, and I think that's just going to accelerate. So we actually have to probably accept that as the new normal and project forward. And that's where I feel that uh, we need to bring all of us together to support this digital massive transformation, which might result in, as some people say, you know, $15.7 trillion of new economic value by 2030. Uh, and I think if we are able to collaborate and collaborate well, uh, I think we could probably take a larger share of that. Thank you. And I think that's a great way of putting it to set the vision forward. Now, 2030 is a number we hear a lot in the recent discussions about creating a better tomorrow. So I actually want to take your example and now come to the panel one by one and ask them to say what they would like to see when it comes to test beds, collaboration. Of course, like you say, McClant, going beyond just communication, but actually healthcare, education, accessibility, regulatory standards. What do we want to see by 2030, not just in Sweden, in the Nordics and in India, but in a cross collaborative way? And I'm going to start again from the way we started the panel in the morning. So Eric, I'm going to start with you. 2030, what do you want to see? So we heard a lot of good examples on how test beds are creating value today. Uh, this is not true for everyone yet. So not everyone has discovered test beds. And I think test beds is a way of engaging new users to invite them and to, to find a way of, cooperate, of co cooperating. So that's one aspect of test beds, the renewal of actors or players in an area. And I think we, we still haven't used enough uh, the existing priorities in our society. So today we might talk a lot about climate, cybersecurity, sustainable cities. This could be also used to strengthen the testing and to, to create a new kind of win-win situation, both for uh, policy and uh, all actors involved in, the, in those priorities. So this is something I, I think will be strengthened going forward. So test beds is a dialogue built across a multi-stakeholder platform. Exactly. Great, Professor Saran, over to you. So what I would like to say, first of all, hopefully we'll be seeing 6G in 2030, not 5G, that were on a lighter note. But uh, I think what we would like the test bed to do is to help us you know, uh, speed up the innovation side. You know, uh, when you're, if there is some tech, key technology which is in a, you are being evaluated in a test bed in, in Sweden and it is of use or potential use, with some modification to other uh, parts of the world, uh, developing countries like India, for example, then can we sort of partner with some Indian companies, Indian entities, what, whatever kind of entities they are, and try to collaborate and sort of look at the problem, look at the potential solution that the other company is coming up with. And so this collaboration with test beds could be to actually demonstrate that across platforms, this kind of thing can happen. And so it becomes, uh, today what happens is, a company has to first fight it out, prove it in one market. And once it has been able to do that, then maybe that will get copied by others or that company itself finds the resources to 
make it available. So the whatever gets innovated, some new idea which is very useful to users in some part of the world, just doesn't travel as fast today as it could. So that would be one sort of uh, intent of the whole exercise by Thank bringing you. all the stakeholders together and with the support of the relevant uh, sort of bilateral framework that the government has so that whatever issues of IP and other can be resolved in amicable ways. Right? To speed up innovation and create kind of a global prosperity opportunity by sharing right. experiences. Great. Yes. Thank you very much. So rather we come to you for Eric's point of view, you will be operationalizing this vision. What do you see by 2030? Uh, 2030 is not in the future. I think Professor Saran said we are looking at things. A lot of work is there, <laughs> and the tentative timelines are obviously things you will be there. But see, the reality is that we are living in a rapidly changing world on the cusp of a lot of new era of possibilities, and technology is driving all of them. Uh, having said that, we are also seeing some of the uh, most important factors, whether it is socio-economic or political and technology factors are also coming in. For example, this entire thing around uh, bringing down the uh, you know carbon footprint level, just to give you an example, would increase consumption, that's an area. So you'll have a lot of factors uh, which will drive technology. So technology on its own will be there. You have leading technologies, not just 6G, you'll have internet of princes, you'll have extreme wireless, we are talking about moving into spectrum bands beyond. And I think here, test beds will play a very critical role. Uh, even when 5G gets completely rolled out and 6G will start coming in, these test beds around the world, uh, we hope they will all be then connected and then it won't matter. Uh, you will have, wherever innovations happen, they will have access to this test bed. They can uh, they can do their experiments. Uh, we are uh, we were looking at possibility why you have it. For example, any kid, any innovative kid sitting in any part of the world can access a test bed, innovate and let the mankind benefit from it. So I'm extremely positive uh, for the next decade. Thank you. So what we're saying now is test beds, of course, that's the rules for engagement. In this case, 5G is our use case. But of course, the rules for engagement can continue as technology improves and technology actually expands. Now, with that, I come to Susanna. Now, you talked about, of course, the baseline study that was done. And you outlined some key strengths and some weaknesses and needs for moving ahead within the Nordics in this case. So, of course, you have a roadmap ahead of you of what could be done, what needs to be done. What would you like to see between now and 2030? Uh, I would like to see, if we talk about Sweden-India Sweden -India collaboration, I think it would be useful to make a baseline study in our countries as well, to see where are our strengths, where are our weaknesses, where are the opportunities, and where are the threats. And this would go first and foremost, perhaps for the, um, for the 5G, but then also for the 6, 6G testbeds, because that will be the important technology to, to um, yeah, that will be the driving technology by 2030, I think. So it's not the time to let go of 5G. We have to increase collaboration there as well, then also to phase over to 6G. Great. And Thank we you. have Per Arne and Lena with us who heard that. So baseline study between India and Sweden in this area coming to you soon from the Embassy of Sweden. I'm going to end now with Subash. With the work that you're doing on the ground, what would you like to see by 2030? 5G, 6G test beds. Right. Yeah, so 2030, as um, Professor Saran and um, uh, Dr. Mitra already said, it is the year of IMT 2030, the official 6G standard. So I would lo look at three things. One, I already said, cross-country use case, uh, meeting the even uh, sustainable development goals, one of them being is digital well-being, emotional health specifically in the pandemic context, I am seeing it has a international significance. I actually am doing some work in IT fully, but I will not talk about this. So cross country, uh, cross um, across the globe relevant uh, use case, I think. Uh, and the 5G, 6G is a uh, innovation test bed bringing the multiple disciplines together on a single communication fabric. So that becomes a very, very right case for the test bed. Second thing I would say is the inclusive access mm -hmm. to the test bed, uh, right from the researchers to uh, equal, equitable engagement from the industry, equal, equitable engagement from the consumers who are going to be the benefactor of this research, all of them coming together and engaging in a meaningful milestone driven uh, engagement. Third is the access. I think Eric, you talked about 
digitalization enabling global access, access to the uh, test bed, a model for publish subscribe exactly the way the cloud native architecture has evolved. The telecom and net are coming together, enabling that even in the research bed. I think that would be phenomenal. So these are the three things I would do. Thank you so much. And I think as Per Ane started today's panel by saying, we are here together to pioneer the possible. And these are the pioneers on the panel with us. And we're so happy to have you all here. And we look forward to touching base again next year to see where we've come and where we're going to. Thank you again. And I'll ask the audience to give our panel a big hand.